Welcome to this episode of On The Trail. I'm Ali Mansour, and today we're gonna be on the world famous Rubicon Trail. Joining me today, we've got Bob Sweeney, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy behind the Jeepers Jamboree, and another veteran automotive journalist like myself, Harry Wagner. These guys know the Rubicon Trail better than anybody, and this is gonna be really fortunate for me because I've gotta get this big boat of a Jeep Gladiator through the trail. So I actually started this journey in Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where I'm from. And that's roughly 2,900 miles from the start of the trail to my house. But it was a long trip coming out here. And that's a big thing for why I built this Jeep is I wanted to be able to have something like that, that I wouldn't trailer, that I had the confidence in the components that I put underneath of it, you know, good nitto tires, better axles with the Dynatrack axles. So I could drive this thing everywhere. This is actually my second cross country trip this year. Real far, long ways from home. So it's a 2,900 miles drive to get out here but this is worth it I'm, I'm super stoked and I couldn't be with better people to go do this trail with so I can't wait just got to get these tires aired down and let's do it we got our freezer fridge full of drinks we got our camping gear got our clothes for the weekend and if you're in a two-door Jeep that that's all the room you got So the Rubicon Trail is about 22 miles of non-stop rock crawling. It is why Jeep made the Rubicon Edition a rock crawling edition and this is really all about knowing uh, your vehicle and just taking your time and doing some good rock crawling. It's also incredibly scenic and sometimes it gets overlooked by the fact that this is a technical rock crawling trail but this is a beautiful place to be. So the big thing about the Rubicon Trail is it's really a camping and wheeling trip. We're gonna be spending three days traversing from start to finish and we got two great nights of camping at two epic spots. But before we get into that, we gotta get through the trail and here comes the gatekeeper. Driving through Walmart in your Rubicon is not doing the Rubicon. It's coming here and hitting the trailhead. It's, it's airing down and coming through Gatekeeper and seeing what your vehicle can do. Doing all right back there? All good, she just makes some noise. I think what sets the Rubicon apart from other trails, whether they're in Moab or the Hammers or things like that, it is in essence an overland route. Overlanding's popular now, maybe more popular than rock crawling. Um, this kind of combines all those elements. So it's a challenge, but you're going from one point to another. You've got lakes, you've got scenery, you've got history. The Rubicon just has it all. There's no other trail out there that, that has what this offers. out here your cell phone doesn't work it's beautiful it's quiet it's serene and I really think taking the opportunity to unplug and take in that scenery and you're reaching an area that's not accessible to the general public you're not going to run across someone in their RV out on the Rubicon Little sluice, little sluice was good. There was one difficult area in it. Just so happened my Jeep just kind of cruised through there. Rubicon, you need you know a decent sized tire and a decent lift. When you're right sitting there, low on the ground, you will turtle on Driver. the rocks. Nice, nice. 
Now you're going to climb up on the rear. You don't want to put your driver's tire right on here. Can you see it? I know you're a little short in there. I've been fortunate enough to be coming up here my entire life. I really like to see this trail through the eyes of someone like Ali, who, you know, this is a big deal for him. He drove all the way across the country to come here and he's so excited. And sometimes I lose that. I've, you know, I kind of take it for granted. I've been coming here my entire life. I don't get up here as much as Bob. I think Bob's up here. He said a dozen times a year he goes through the trail. When you come with folks that are new to the trail or who don't necessarily take it for granted, they don't get to do it all the time. Uh, it really just ups the whole energy level of the trip. Go passenger. Keep it passenger. Nope, nope, back up. Nope, back on up that hanger right where your shock is, is giving you a heck right now. This is fun. It's so long, so big. I've never tried to get anything this big through a, such a tight rock trail, but, uh, and Bob we trust, so we'll get it through here. Having done the trail before, I feel like I have to completely throw out everything I know. The glide heater is so big, so all of the lines that I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna take this way, turning out to be a more challenging uh, thing to get the Jeep through here. I don't mind that I'm hitting the back bumper and the frame, and skid plates and the axles. That's okay, because it's not hurting anything that's gonna keep me from driving home. I just gotta make sure that drive shaft stays intact and we can figure everything else out. Hey, I noticed this uh, rope hasn't been used. You wanna use it? It's a brand new rope. I think we're gonna use it right here to help you through here. All right, I'll roll my Jeep back down here a little bit. I think that's gonna be our easiest way for this toboggan to get through here. Does it need to be turned on? Or? It, it, it needs to be engaged. I don't know if he's backing up to like use the rock as like a, a keep the Jeep from rolling. Yeah, a great opportunity to use my rugged winch. Uh, uh, winch today and that's all right that's uh, sometimes I mean that's why I've got it in case I get into a situation where I need to be recovered that's why it's a self-recovery tool no big deal I'm just uh, stoked to be doing this today are you controlled from the inside with this I am basically the same line stay with that line okay what it was is your skid plate was hanging just right here is all really okay. stay, pull your rope in pull your rope in Pull your rope in, pull your rope in. Hold on, hold on. Straight, where you are, pull your rope in. Nice and easy, yeah. Yeah, you're making through there. Instead of hitting this button, I hit this button. Oh, and I, I don't think yep, I flipped it. Yep, I think so. Yeah, because I was like, I don't think I'm hitting this right. I was like, what? Uh, it was where, yeah, because you coiled yeah, over? Pulled, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just, I, I screwed up. That's, that's just me. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. I you like uh, Audi instead of Annie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put your driver's tire right here. turtled right on this rock just like he was. Come hard passenger now. Maybe that'll bring you off a bit and just get you just off of this. Once your tire hits there, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna want as soon as you can go passenger. All right, you're bound up a little bit right now, but as soon as you can, straighten your tire up. Okay, there you go. Oh, now you're really turtled on that sucker. Straight, there you go. You're gonna have to use the rope because you're turtled. Yeah, doing all right. Pretty tore up. Uh, we just went through Little Sluice. Bob walked right through and then Ali got stuck and shame on me for thinking, oh, I'm gonna teach him a thing or two and then Karma came and bit me. I got stuck on exactly the same rock that Ali was on and had to winch just like he did. You know, it justifies the purchase, right? So in 
1887, my great-great-grandfather signed a declaration to make the Rubicon and County Road. My grandfather was on the first nine Jeepers Jamboree. He was on the committee at that time. Then my father was on the board of supervisors that helped keep the Rubicon open. I've been a director now for 38 years. My son helps me out on Jeepers Jamboree. And now his son, that is six, comes in and helps, uh, hangs around as a young kid. He makes the seventh generation of Sweeney's being out here on the Rubicon. There was a while, uh, probably about a decade ago, the Rubicon was very close to being shut down. It had become a lawless area. There was a lot of like, people were just going to the bathroom all over the place. And there's really a small soil profile here. There's a lot of granite. And it, it was a very real possibility that the Rubicon was gonna get closed. We're in a much better place now. That's certainly something I never wanna see happen. Just not only do I have so many memories up here, but I've made great friendships up here. And, and this is an iconic trail. It's certainly something I never wanna see go away. And as long as everyone enjoys it responsibly, that shouldn't be a problem. You see somebody go off over there and poop, go tell them to go clean it up, go bury it, pick up your toilet paper. We can't do that. They're gonna close it down. And we don't want that. Doing the best we can with what we got. That's right. We need to get it back up and run it. Uh, today's his first trip out. Okay, okay. We are operating Big Stinky right here. Motto of the season is if it don't pass through your pipes, it won't pass through mine. Hence, no trash in the toilets, please. Once a week we come out here. And how many gallons do you think you pull out at a time? I'm gonna say probably in the neighborhood of 250 plus. It's a lot of poop. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of poop. <laughs> Hopefully it's all just poop. It has been recently. Okay, good, yes, good, good. Yes. So yeah, we got uh, this onboard pressure washer. Um, 12 volt pressure washer. Feeds the, the hose that we rinse down the restrooms with. This is a PTO driven vacuum pump that feeds the 350 gallon tank to suck the waste out of the toilets. And then we've got 60 gallons of fresh water over there in the white tank to wash them down and then refill them after they're cleaned. And then we're gonna go straight here so the gladiator can go through here because that toboggan, yeah. will be catching that rock right there as we make the turn and he will not have a tail light anymore. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah. Priorities? Yeah, yeah. Wheeling with Bob is amazing because you're not only going to get the right line and you're, there's no guessing where you're going to go, but he's also an unbelievable wealth of information. Hey, Mama. Hey, Mama. Good looking animals. This road right here originally was for people to come from Georgetown to Lake Tahoe via the Rubicon. Horse and buggy. It would take them five days to go from Georgetown to Lake Tahoe. Every time we go to an obstacle, we'll find out what the name is, how it got the name, the history of it. Oh, this hole right here used to be twice the size, and this rock that we're going, that your skid plate kept on, it was huge. It was huge. You're talking about a guy that's been here for generations, so you get so much more than a trip. It's like a guided tour of the Rubicon Trail, which is fantastic.
give. You look through your Binoxia. Come here, I'll, I'll show you this. If you're an experienced wheeler or a beginner wheeler, it's not gonna matter because the Rubicon is sort of that uh, equalizer of no matter how well your vehicle is, you, you can always plan for things. And especially when you're this far out, no cell service, you need to make sure you've got a game plan to get your vehicle fixed and out of here. Jeepers Jamboree will make that a lot easier for you. So if you're a first timer, do not do this trail by yourself. Um, and if you wanna do it with a friend, let's make sure that friend has got contacts in this area, is very familiar with it. Uh, definitely, I'm the guy out here with the big rooftop tent, and part of it's just fun to have the rooftop tent because Harry Wagner hates rooftop tents. Yeah. Yes. The backstory here, the rooftop tent, uh, if you follow the Driving Line YouTube channel, one of the early videos I made was why I don't like rooftop tents. I am not alone in thinking that these are just a fad. And um, this tent I have here, this ground tent from MSR, nine pounds, super compact, easy to set up. And uh, rooftop tents are popular. They definitely have their pros, but I think they have a lot of cons too in terms of price, weight, size, and uh, you know, Ollie drove across the country. I don't blame him for wanting to be comfortable and having that tent on the back of his Jeep. I can't really fit a tent on the back of my Jeep. It doesn't have a pickup bed. It's become a friendly banter for sure today on the trail. I mean, I, I think if we timed it, I would say realistically this thing was open before his. So it took me like maybe three minutes. So. I don't know, Harry. I don't know. The bears seem to like ground food more than they do the stuff that's in the trees. Just saying. So today, woke up here at Buck Island, had a beautiful breakfast, and we are now going to wheel the shortest section of our trip so far, but the hardest. We are going to leave here at Buck Island, and we're going to head to Rubicon Springs. When we go down and go through Big Sluice and Property Line, there is such big boulders, big holes, and I recommend you hit the high sides on them all. Try not to fall in those holes because it is gonna be difficult. Even though we have gravity helping us, those holes do swallow you up and you will get turtled high centered on a rock. Mainly something that I know I'm not going to get in trouble with uh, either hitting the belly on or hitting the drive shaft on. So something that's either too big of a face or a rock that's right in the middle that I know I have no choice but to go in the middle and oh that's going to hit the drive shaft for sure. So I'm going to be off uh, probably a little bit to the left, keep the tires on the bigger rocks. That should give me enough clearance for the belly and I uh, shouldn't hit the drive shaft. Shouldn't hit the drive shaft. I better not. I did back there. I got a little mark on the yoke now. Okay, yeah, we'll do this. This looks good for a gladiator. And Bob said this is the better gladiator line, so I'm gonna trust in Bob. This obstacle right here is uh, gonna give uh, the gladiator some challenge. So that's why he's gonna venture off to the left side here. I'm gonna shoot this straight up and play into the hard rock right there and do some climbing. See, uh, see my grapplers grab. It's gonna be cool. God, it's a beautiful day. It is awesome.
I just came down on my driveline you on did. that rock. So did it take the driveline out? Yeah. It did. Oh yeah. I see the angle of the dangle. This has really gotten to be a bugger. We got about a thousand feet from Buck Island and our support vehicle. Uh, slipped off of a rock, landed on his pinion, his rear pinion, and that took out the drive line. So we're sitting right here on the side of the trail. Ron came through here, it's a little tight area, and his rear uh, pumpkin and drive line kind of slapped down on the rock, and this is what happens. It popped it, looking at right now, we don't have the full shaft out, but it's looking like it, it popped right out at the weld. Uh, well, the trail fix is now I'm running on front wheel drive only and hopefully we can get up the rest of this hill to martini tree and down big sluice and through property line and then i can get underneath it and work on it if we have a drive line down at the bottom one way or another it'll drive out of here with four-wheel drive ron does not like being on a camera i well, think it's his past and i don't like being in the middle of the trail somebody's trying to come through that's part of it hey bob hand me a third oh this is a uh it's a uh 12 point So the funny thing about it was this morning around breakfast, I was asked the question, how many times do you think the winch is gonna come out? Didn't know it was gonna be this soon, but here we are. <laughs> okay. So I might as well turn around. Yeah, let's get it all rolled in. Right there is a big testament to tires and a built rig. For us to come up through that silt and those loose rocks to pull that heavy dead vehicle, man, oh man, it was nice. If you're gonna be broke down with somebody, this is the guy to be broke down with. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna have to stay to the tail sure. so we can uh, take our support vehicle forward with us to repair it. So yeah, I'll hand the lead over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the good news is we're about to go downhill, which should help. Gravity, and, yes. And fortunately, no traffic, right? That's, that's nice that we haven't seen a whole lot of people today. Okay. So. so we should better go at our own speed, our own pace, so we're not tearing nothing up anymore and cruise on into camp. Sounds good. All right. I run the Rubicon so much, it's my backyard. I've done it with trailers, I've done it with my TJ, I've done it with a CJ5, but when you put another vehicle behind you and you have to care about that person's vehicle too, so you're not doing damage, that's the stressful part. Because I don't want to destroy his rig and I don't want to destroy my rig. So it really makes you think about exactly your lines that you're taking to be able to bring that other vehicle, that limping vehicle through there. Like I said earlier, you want to stay in contact with the guy behind you so you don't pull him around this corner right here and roll his rig over or pull him into a rock and do more side damage. The concern is now Bob's Jeep is pulling another Jeep that only has front wheel drive 
you know, he has to push his Jeep much harder than he would otherwise. And the concern is you can break even more parts. Now we, you know, there's a damage multiplier. And so that's again, when you don't want to be in a hurry, you don't want to get frustrated. Back up, and I'll give you a little bump. Problem is, is I'm sandwiched too. I'm just gonna stay rolling. Rubicon Springs is special in that it's almost shocking when after you show up uh, doing miles of hard rock crawling and all of a sudden you see this beautiful patch of grass, there's a stage, a kitchen, people happy to greet you and you're like, where am I? Did I take a wrong turn? So my feeling right now standing in here kind of gets to me a little bit. A lot of hard work here, a lot of uh, efforts from a lot of people. This is why everybody comes and wheels to Rubicon, is to come here and enjoy Rubicon Springs. Everybody says it's the mineral water here. No, I think it's the valley. I think, I think this valley really holds something close to everybody's heart. Those people have put a lot of time and effort here into Rubicon Springs. And we honor their passing by putting their names up on the wall so everybody else can see and realize if it wasn't for those people, we wouldn't be here today enjoying this. Right here in the center, you have the founder who thought about all this, buying this land, the, making the Jeep trips and everything. That's Mark A. Smith. And he was the trail master for, for Jeepers Jamboree. He was a trail master, I believe, for uh, 36 years. Softness shows big heart. <laughs> This morning got up and in for more wheeling right off the bat. Even that Rubicon Springs property has some pretty challenging obstacles on it right out of the gate. Wheeled through there, got to the bottom of Cadillac Hill, and fortunately we didn't see too much traffic when we were coming up Cadillac because there are not a lot of places to pass. Been an epic trip so far. We had a little bit of issues with our uh, support vehicle, but we got it handled. We have a new driveline in the rig, so he's on his own. I'm not having to tow him anymore. Amen. Let me tell you, that was an anchor.
So today our big obstacle was Cadillac Hill and it got the name from what I gather because there's a frame of a Cadillac that's left, the remnants of it. I don't know when it went off the mountain, I don't know the whole story behind it, but it's pieces of it are still there, which is kind of incredible. The big thing about Cadillac Hills, it's no Cadillac ride. It is tough from start to finish. The big advantage of my Gladiator today is it's long and stable, so I was able to do all of the obstacles and climbs without a lot of drama. It's a little tight for some of the turns, so I had to kind of do some three-point turns to make it around. This is probably the one section of, of the Rubicon that this thing has just shined very well. I, I don't think I've heard as many scrapes and uh, hits today. Looking good, Allie. Looking good. Keep it right there. A little driver. There you go. Why are you going to insult me? Huh? I know I'm a little driver. All right, you That's are hurtful. a little driver. You're right. Beautiful. You can come on around now. You cleared her by a foot. This morning. I didn't want the Bob Sweeney strap on. It just uh, we had it prepared for you. I know, I know, right. I know. I'm, I'm, I don't want to waste it on something like that. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> You know, at camp last night, we were talking about, all right, observation points, kind of like the the last sort of hoorah of what you're going to see, and, and it feels like this is it, you know, and it's a mixed emotion because part of me is like, oh man, it's almost over. You're looking out and taking in the beauty, but you realize like it's almost over and my drive home is getting ready to start, but it's a real sense of accomplishment that, oh man, we're almost out of here. And, my draft shafts, everything's there. The Jeep's still doing well. I don't have any cuts in the tires. It's a real sense of accomplishment. And when you do it with two guys like Bob and Harry that, uh, you know, they're your friends and you just feel good, like, man, this was a good trip. Like, I I'm glad we did this. There's a sense of relief at reaching the end of the trail for sure. And being with Bob was great because he's like a human atlas. He's pointing out, we were over here. We started there. If you look at the spec, we came down right through there. and. I didn't know any of those things before, even after being on this trail so many times. Being able to make that left-hand turn to observation, see that view, and look back over across of everything we just traversed. That photo right there with your rig, with that scenery in the back, you ain't gonna get it anywhere else. Can't go to Walmart and take that same photo. Well, that does it for us in another episode of On the Trail. I want to thank uh, Harry Wagner and Bob Sweeney for really showing us their backyard and giving us incredible hospitality. Uh, they helped navigate my giant gladiator through here, and uh, I'm going to be able to drive it home 3,000 miles, so that's a, that's a big benefit here. We've had a great time. We're on Observation Point, which is really the big payoff at the end of the Rubicon Trail, so if you're going to head out here, be sure to stop and just enjoy this beautiful scenery. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys on the next episode of On the Trail. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.